Hello everyone and welcome to Microsoft Office 2013. Uh, the focus uh, of uh, the first part of the Office 2013 uh, suite uh, is on uh, uh, Word 2013. We already had a lecture in Microsoft uh, Word 2013 and today we will uh, continue talking about the same topic and we will cover uh, more features and options in the application. Uh, first, we will go over a general overview of how to navigate through the application, how to open the options, how to change settings. And then after we are comfortable with the design and the uh, platform, uh, we will start uh, getting uh, deeper into the options and see uh, what features are available for us in the new uh, Microsoft Office Word 2013. So to get started in today's lecture, uh, you will need to uh, open Word 2013. If you, are using, if you are using Windows 8, you click on the tile that says uh, Microsoft Word 2013. If you are using Windows 7, you click on Start and then you type WORD and choose the version, the Microsoft Word version that we are talking about now, which is Word 2013. Once you click on the application, it will ask you, would you like to, to uh, open a, a document from the uh, most recently opened document or would you like to open another document or would you open to would you like to open a blank document or would you like to use a template it cannot get easier than that so if i click on blank document uh, that takes us to the application as a review from the previous uh, lecture do you remember what is the name of the upper section of the application does anyone remember Yes, you are right, ribbon. So that is the name of the upper section. This part here, we have tabs. We have different tabs. Each tab has multiple groups. Each group has multiple commands, right? And you know how to hide and show the ribbon. You know how to seek help. You know how to press here the upper arrow here to collapse the ribbon and to expand the ribbon from this icon here. All right. Uh, going also, we covered uh, the status bar. We have a page number out of total number, and then how many words. Usually you get statistics. If you click here, it tells you the number of pages, the words, the characters, and so on. Uh, also, it tells you the language as well. You know that you have different views to look at your document. You have read mode, you have uh, print layout mode, and you have web layout uh, view. So you have different views in here, and you can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, also, we talked about the backstage view. Uh, we covered uh, info. Uh, let's say you would like to protect your document. If you would like to protect this document, if you click on the info link from the left panel inside the backstage view, if I click on protect document, I can mark it as final. I can encrypt it with a password. You can do that if you choose to. Also, you can restrict editing, you can choose who can edit the documents. And if you are trying to get advanced, you can even add a digital uh, signature. So these are things that you can do to encrypt your documents. Uh, marking as final is a good uh, practice if you completed a document and you need to tell other uh, collaborators that this document is final so they don't make any changes or for yourself even. Uh, if you need to uh, really protect your document, usually uh, most of us we use uh, encrypt with a password. But be, make sure that you keep a record of this password so you don't uh, forget it. Uh, going back here, uh, we have uh, compatibility issues. If you click on com compatibility issues here, check for issues, you can inspect the document 
uh, to check the document for hidden properties or personal information. Sometimes, before you send a document to someone else, uh, it's a good practice to make sure that the document is inspected so you, uh, you you don't give away information that you don't want to other people uh, also uh, uh, you can uh, check the accessibility and the uh, compatibility all right uh, if you would like if you would like to check compatibility with other uh, uh, or previous Microsoft Office products, you can uh, check the compatibility uh, from this link. So, what kind of information do I need to inspect the document for? Uh, look here under properties, I have show document panel. If I click on show document panel, it will open the actual properties for my document. So, sometimes uh, some people, for example, here, uh, my name is not actually uh, uh, correctly like I have my name uh, Maksud Maksud so someone might change that to last name and first name so you can do that and after you finish you save you can add title and uh, because the document was not saved before it's asking me to save it uh, uh, again so I will go ahead and save it uh, somewhere a good practice to save it inside a document a folder I will uh, call it here uh, practice because we are just practicing uh, some of the features and uh, once you are done you just close this property uh, panel going back to the backstage view if I, if I click on file and then click on info I have here uh, manage uh, versions this is if you are creating different versions <clears throat> Uh, for uh, the application or if you'd like to recover unsaved documents all right so this will uh, open uh, different ver versions of the current document and it will enable you to uh, recover uh, this document F for instance if you are working on a document and then for some reason uh, the uh, uh, electricity uh, went out uh, without any uh, alert so you can go back to previous uh, versions and uh, look at it and try to uh, choose the correct version that you would like to use so in in this section here we covered protect documents how to inspect the document how to uh, check versions and looking at the properties we covered show uh, document panel and if you would like to get advanced you can even open the advanced options and check for each tab and look at the values available uh, so this is something that you can look at it, def it differs from one person to another and it differs from one person if that person would like to share some information with others some people don't like to share person personal information with uh, with others so this is totally up to you you know where is the location you know where to go to go to the backstage view and then click on info again we covered new last time so I will not uh, talk about new again but if you need to uh, open a file from template look at how many templates do I have if you need to check or choose different category you can if you don't find what you are looking for from the list displayed below you can just start uh, typing the uh, actual subject that you are looking for uh, so this is something that I encourage all of you to practice it's a fun thing to do so please go ahead everyone and practice doing that now going to open if you'd like to open a, a document you can open it from the recent open documents or you can go to your SkyDrive account or you can open it from your computer but you need to specify the location from either the desktop from the uh, document folder or you can browse your uh, system or you can even add a place so if you click on add a place here it tells you would you like to add a place uh, from the uh, uh, pointing to the Office 365 share uh, point or a SkyDrive. So this is something that you uh, can practice on your own. Uh, most likely you will use either a, a SkyDrive or a computer. Uh, saving, we know how to save, right? Control S if you remember. And save as, same thing you need to, if you need to to save the document with a different name or save it in a different location you can choose the save as also when you click on uh, print we covered the print uh, section last time in the first lecture but uh, the only thing that we did not cover if you need to print multiple copies so if you need to print for example four or five copies you change the number of copies uh, from here by the way uh, the print preview here it shows you 
the actual how the actual page will look like when to when you print it so this is actually a place to uh, change the print uh, settings and a place also for print preview so this is something for you to remember do you see this this side here this page this is a print preview to the page and how it will display how it will look like uh, when you print it if you click on uh, share uh, i covered that also last time you can share your document but you need to save it uh, first and after you sh you save it uh, you can uh, share it with other people uh, by using their email address or you can even uh, send it by uh, email if you click on email you can send it as an attachment it will open the email application or you can go to your web email and then attach it from inside uh, uh, your web uh, email session you can also click on send as pdf file the entire <coughs> the entire document will uh, get converted to a pdf file and it will get attached uh, to your email so everybody uh, can get the attachment you can also save it as xps and send it as a fax uh, if i click here i don't have a fax service that's why it is asking me to connect to the fax service you can go to any of the providers and uh, buy uh, an internet fax service and then configure your computer uh, to use it to send a document directly from your a computer that is connected to the internet to a fax uh, machine now most likely most of us now we use uh, email it's more convenient and it's easier as well so going back here to the print we covered almost everything in print share we covered now share uh, present online email and post to blog if you have a blog you can post your document to that blog uh, also you can export your documents you can change the file type if you would like to change choose a different file type you can for example if you have a document with the extension docx you can convert it to txt and so on uh, if you click on a close this will uh, close what the, the application did not close right it closed the actual document so now to open the document again i click on file and then open most recent practice now i get back my document so remember that file and then close doesn't close the application it closes the document only all right but if i go to the actual word icon on top of file and then it choose close well it closes the entire application so to open the document again you can uh, open a microsoft word application first and then open the document from inside microsoft application or you can double click on the document that you created directly and that will open the application and the document inside it so by looking at what we have here we are getting ready to uh, be advanced in uh, our uh, session so let's look at more advanced uh, uh, options we talked about uh, accounts and how to change the account settings you can change the background the theme you can even add a service you can add social networks you can change the update options you can disable update view update what is update usually your application needs to be updated from time to time uh, as microsoft releases a new software to make your application up to date uh, with the current uh, software so now uh, one more thing left here in the backstage view which is options options is a big part that's why we did not cover it in the first lecture the first lecture i was just trying to give you an overall idea of what we have so going at uh, the options the word options here so how do you access the microsoft word 2013 options uh, dialog box you go to the backstage view by pressing on uh, file and then after you press on file you click on options and once you click on options uh, we will not have uh, uh, time to cover all of these options but we will just uh, point out the most important ones the ones that you really need to use so if i skip some of these options uh, don't worry about it uh, just focus on the ones that i will explain uh, the first option here it, it says uh, show many toolbar on selection so what is a many toolbar so now we need some text can any re anyone remind me how do we get some text immediately from microsoft word so we have a function that we can use equals r a n d open close parentheses and then press enter 
voila we got some text so since we have some text let's go ahead and uh, look what is the mini toolbar look when i uh, highlight prove for example look what happened what is that this is called the mini toolbar so what do i need the mini toolbar for you use the most common uh, commands that you really need when you work with text when you need to format some uh, text uh, if you don't want to use it that's fine the same exact commands you can see it here under the home tab and you will see all of these commands available for you so the mini toolbar you know what is it what is the mini toolbar it's a, a small uh, dialogue uh, screen that includes uh, most common used commands uh, that you need to deal with a uh, text when you select or when you uh, hover on top of a text like that look if i select this text i get the mini toolbar so we will cover selection don't worry about it let's go back to back what is it called does anyone remember backstage what backstage view so let's go to options again one more time so now we know what is the mini toolbar right uh, uh, something uh, also that you might uh, need to uh, look at uh, don't show screen tab screen tab is basically when you go to a command and then hover it on it for a while you see do you see this is the screen uh, tip uh, if you want to change that it's up to you uh, it some doesn't bother me so i just leave it default so i will uh, go over the things that i really uh, don't want to change inside my application and i will just look at uh, the most important uh, elements also if you need to change the background theme you can do that uh, go ahead and change it as you uh, prefer uh, also you can look at the extension that look here when i choose here these extensions here when you double click on any of these files usually by default it will open uh, microsoft word all right uh, once i close here i will go back now we are done with the first category general all right easy right so let's go back to display uh, if you do you, do you remember uh, the show and hide format okay if you don't remember do you see this this icon here this is to show hide format right now you can change that and make it uh, show uh, permanently every time you open a document you will see this format so this is something that i really don't uh, don't change i just leave it as is you don't have to make any changes in here and changes in here uh, so let's go to the next category which is a uh, proofing proofing so only one thing i will cover here uh, in proofing which is the autocorrect options all right everything else i will just let it for you to look at so basically this is very straightforward uh, self-explanatory so go ahead and read each one of them however i'm not asking you to change any of these settings but something that that you might know look when i go to this document here i will uh, select oh, by the way when you need to select the entire document you can just press ctrl a right that will select everything ctrl a on the keyboard and then press on delete key so now let's make a mistake t e h right i am trying to type that t h e so once i press a space look what happened microsoft auto corrected my uh, my typing right so let's go back and type nm and then press enter so it didn't do anything to nm why because i don't have any correct option for nm to uh, change that i will go to file and then i will go to the options and then i will go to uh, proofing and then i will click on auto correct options right and then i will click on uh, let's say here by default you will get the autocorrect tab open all right once you get the autocorrect tab go ahead and uh, uh, search for t e h look t h replace with t t h e so now we know wh why that is happening so let's put n m so n m once i type n m replace it with nasser maksud all right so that's something that you can use in the future and then you press on add and then click ok and then i will click on ok now going back to my document delete everyone everything and then type nm uh, space look what happened uh, magic right no it's not magic it's just steps that you need to follow and uh, once you follow these steps 
you will end up getting what you really need. So going back here to uh, file uh, backstage view uh, for my application uh, and then click on options. Once I click on options, uh, I already covered uh, proofing. I told you only one thing I will cover, right? And let's look at save. Uh, from uh, usually Microsoft has a default extension. I told you before DOCX, right? You can change the default saving extension by choosing one of these, but I will not change it. I will leave it as is. Auto uh, recovery, which is it will save your documents uh, every 10 uh, minutes. You can also change that. And uh, uh, this is the location when you uh, save your document. That's the default location. It will open uh, the documents folder and it will save it in that uh, location. You can also change that and point to a different uh, location. Everything else, I will just leave it as is. Going to uh, language, you can add an additional language. If you choose here, uh, for example, uh, let's say Africans, Africans, and then click add, it will add this language. Right? But I will not add anything for now. You can look at it also if you need to install a language in the future. Once you have it, you can click on the language if it is additional language and then click on remove or you can set it as default. So every time you open your Microsoft application, it will uh, look at uh, or it will enable this language automatically. So that's language. Let's look at advanced. So the advanced section, uh, really, this is something that takes a lot of time to cover all of these options. So I, if you are interested, you can look at it, but we will not uh, change anything here. So I will leave everything default. So let's go back to the a new category, which is customizing a ribbon ribbon do you remember the ribbon so going uh, looking at the ribbon here i have different tabs right what you can do for your ribbon you can uh, change uh, these uh, tabs and create your own ribbon all right so let's go ahead and uh, look at what you can do once i click on customize ribbon uh, if i click on the home tab here i can click on rename and I can change home to something else. Let's uh, make home MECC, for example, or uh, VCCS, uh, and then click OK. Look what happened. Uh, uh, home is now VCCS, and once I click OK, it will change home to VCCS. So you can uh, change the tabs to your own uh, name, right? So how do I change that again? By the way, if you double click on any of these tabs, it auto hides and it uh, collapse as you can see here. Double click once, double click again, it will reverse the action. Going to file and then uh, options and then what we have here under under uh, customize ribbon. So now I need to change VCCS back to its original name which is uh, home and I will click uh, OK. Look what I can do. I can create even my own tab. So if I cl uh, click on new tab, but usually if you are selecting a tab, it will uh, insert the new tab uh, 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 immediately after the selected one. So now let's say I would like, I would like to click OK, and then I have here uh, some of the tabs here new tab and it is empty why because it because I did not change the name and I did not change the group so going back to file and click on options uh, and then click on customize uh, ribbon and what I can do here I can click on uh, reset and click reset all customizations it will ask me would you like to reset click yes and then click ok look the tab disappears so if you make any changes you can reset everything back so there is no fear that you will uh, change the application because you know that you can reset it back to its default location or default configuration so uh, creating a new tab but uh, this time i will go all the way after view so it will display after the view uh, section and then i will click on new tab and i will call this tab here, uh, this is the name of the tab. I will rename it to, uh, let's call this one, uh, what? Uh, anyone come up with a name? So let's call it uh, uh, my tab, for example. My tab, right? 
and then click OK and I will create cl uh, click create a new group I will click on a rename first you need to give a, a, an icon for your group let's uh, click on the uh, this symbol here and you can uh, rename right from the same screen so once you click on the rename you click you choose the icon and you give a name from uh, by uh, uh, changing the name here so I will type here actions right and then I will click OK so now uh, I don't have any commands look when I click OK now do what do I have I have my tab and I have actions group but I don't have any commands how do you add some commands to it going back here to customize uh, ribbon you can drag uh, one from here put it inside uh, action email let's say uh, find now now you can even uh, choose uh, the command for all commands so that will display all of the commands the, look what happened it took time and then it populated now you have all of the commands let's say you need a command that says record a macro that is not even uh, visible and now when you click OK go back to my tab look at that look at that so now you know you know how to program the application you are getting there so uh, stay tuned everyone you will really like this uh, feature and how to customize the application uh, if you right click on any tab you can choose uh, collapse the ribbon you can uh, right click again and then uh, make it uh, expand right click and you can uh, choose customize the ribbon directly without going to the backstage view so from here I will click on reset reset all customization and then I will click OK click OK again now I have my application back to its original configuration going back to the file backstage view okay well I need to use the front mechanism now I told you if you right click on any tab you can open the customize the ribbon directly from here alright so what is show quick access toolbar below the ribbon what is the quick access toolbar do you see this section here this is called the quick access access toolbar if you click here you can customize the quick access toolbar and you can even this look when I click email it displays the email uh, icon quick print it displays the quick print icon or I can uh, show more command or I can even uh, customize my uh, quick access toolbar right I can uh, choose show below or I can choose uh, show above the ribbon uh, when I click back here I can let's see here more commands if I go to more commands I can uh, uh, remove commands from here that I added or I can choose let's say I would like to show all of the macro commands or uh, maybe all of the commands available and then uh, scroll one by one and then I can drag one of these commands here click on it and then click add and then click OK and now it will display this uh, icon if I need to remove it right click on it and then I choose remove if I need to uh, let's say inside one of these uh, tabs here I like I really like one of the commands for example in mailings I can right click on any of these here and then click on add to quick access toolbar and that will add it to the quick access toolbar as you can see here or I can remove it by right clicking on it and then it choose remove from quick access toolbar so now we know how to navigate and how to get around our application going back here and then click on option and uh, let's say customize ribbon uh, I think we are good on this one you know how to navigate how to create but in reality you don't really need to do any of this this is just for fun so quick access toolbar you already covered this section you know how to access it from uh, quick access toolbar itself or you can uh, access it by going to the backstage view and that will give you access to the settings for the quick access toolbar and ends this is something that you don't have to uh, worry about uh, trust center sometimes when you download any uh, word document uh, or open any untrusted word document uh, the application will display an alert message uh, and they will see a message bar on top or uh, info message on top of your application uh, just maybe below the ribbon and it will tell you uh, enable editing you will not be able to to save anything inside your document or make any uh, uh, edit wise 
uh, change unless you click on enable editing someone will ask why because sometimes there are some malicious uh, macros or code inside the word documents so microsoft is trying to uh, uh, make sure that you first give permission to these documents and say okay well i trust this document and uh, open it so if you really don't like microsoft to give you alerts you can go to the trust center and then you can disable all macro notification disable all macro without notification or you can enable all macros but this is not recommended because there is potential dangerous code that can run on your system okay you can also look at uh, different uh, uh, settings with ActiveX, this is advanced, but please keep it, keep everything as as is, as default. And let's go back. So now, are we good with the backstage view? Any question, anyone? So we are good. We don't have, I assume, we don't have any questions. And we covered uh, our tabs. We know the title bar. We know the quick access toolbar. We know the ribbon, we know how to uh, switch accounts and how to uh, access the account settings, how to change the photo if you don't, would like to change your photo, what happens when you go to backstage view and click close, what happens when you click on this document here and then click on uh, exit or close. So now you are getting there. So let's go ahead and open a file here, the same file I was just uh, working with a minute ago. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the basics again. Uh, I need some text, so equals R A N D, and then open close parentheses, and now I have some text available for me. In this text here, I told you that uh, I am in which view? I am in the print layout view. So this is something that you need to check always because this is a good view for you to know what's going on with your document if you are editing it. I have the ruler on top and uh, I have some text. In this text here, in, if you need to select one word, double click on the word. That will select the word. If you are inside a paragraph, this is called a paragraph, right? So now, if you don't like to double click on a word, you can click at the beginning of the word and then drag, keep holding the left click and then uh, drag uh, right or left and that will select the range that you specify. If you double click inside the paragraph, it, it selects the word. If you click three times, look what happened, three times, one, two, three, it selects the entire uh, paragraph. So now let's say uh, if you are in the margin here, once you see the uh, arrow, you can click once, it will select the line uh, facing or beside the arrow. If you click twice, it selects the entire paragraph. If you click three times, it selects the entire document. Does anyone remember what keyboard combination to select the entire document? Again, I said that uh, 10 minutes ago. Control A. Control A will select the entire uh, text inside your uh, document. Right? Everything inside the document will get selected once you press Control, o, uh, control A. So this is called the, uh, the margin here. I have upper, uh, top margin, uh, right margin, left margin, and I have a bottom margin. So these are things that you need to know and understand. And this is a paragraph here, right? This is a paragraph, and this is one line in a paragraph, and this is one word inside uh, my paragraph. You know what is that? This is called the what? Many toolbar. You can you know uh, why you use the many toolbar, right? So let's go ahead and uh, delete. While I'm explaining, please everyone make sure that you pause and practice yourself. Uh, that's how you learn. Uh, if you are just watching, you might learn, but uh, if you do the hands-on, I think you will benefit the most. So uh, while you are watching me, please make sure that you pause and then um, finish what I explain and uh, once you are comfortable with it continue working with the uh, next uh, uh, step so uh, let's say I would like to take video from here just video so I will double click on video once it is selected right click on it you right click on top of video and then it choose uh, copy then go to a, a, a blank line this is called the uh, blinking eye beam, right? Once you click uh, in here, that is the insertion location. So now if I right click on that location and then it choose paste, look at the paste option. I can keep the source formatting 
I can merge format with the existing format or I can keep text only. So please everyone make sure that you look at all of them. If you change your mind, you can go to here, the down arrow, and then let's say, let's do it one more time. Let's make sure that we select video again and then make it bold, make it italic, uh, make it red. So now I added some format, all right? Now let's delete this video and go down here. Uh, now double click on a video. If you need to undo what you just did, click on uh, undo, undo again, undo, look, look what happened. Or if you need to redo, you can redo. If you hover on each one of them, it tells you the keyboard shortcut combination, control Y to redo and control Z to undo. And then look here, if I hover and don't click, just control S to save, that gives you an idea of what's going on. Or you can use keyboard shortcut combination, double click on the words, control C, and then I just looked, hovered, and then it's, it told me, by practice you will remember and uh, do that on your own. Control V to paste. Right, now, I already pasted. What if I need to change the paste option? I can choose here text only. Look when I choose text only. Look when I choose here merge formatting. Look when I choose keep source formatting. So now, you know, when you paste uh, any text, you have different ways of uh, pasting, all right? Uh, now, let's say uh, I already applied some format here and I need to take the format from here, apply it to a different location inside my document. So there is there is something that's called the format painter. You paint the format from one location and then uh, apply it to a different location. First, you need to click in the location that has the format that you would like to paint from. And then you choose on the painter icon here and drag on top of the text that you would like to change the format based on the uh, source format. Or you can uh, double click on it. Now you, you have the painter with you all the time. You can do it on this one. You can do it on this one. You, keep, uh, you can do it on this one. Once you click in the middle of any word, or you can select an entire section of your paragraph, right? If you are done with your painter, you press escape on the keyboard and that will take the painter away, right? You have something that's called the clipboard. If you click on this down arrow here, it shows you what you copied from your documents. I have video, right? So I can go to a new location and then press enter uh, and that will, uh, by the way, if you go to any location and they would like to paste, double click on that location. Double click on that location that will put the cursor uh, at that location. And then once I click on a video, you have the text coming from the clipboard. You can clear the clipboard uh, uh, items or you can uh, paste all if you have multiple uh, items that you copied or cut. If you need to cut text, by the way, you need to understand the difference between copy and cut. A copy leaves the original uh, cut uh, takes the original from its location and then it keeps it in the clipboard. L watch what is watch the clipboard once I uh, right click on this text and then it choose uh, cut. Look what happened now. Uh, uh, powerful is in my clipboard. Clipboard is basically uh, a place uh, in the uh, actual uh, application that keeps track of the items I copy or I cut from my documents and I can paste it back again here powerful now I have it back keep in mind the cursor this is the eye beam this is the blinking eye beam uh, when you have some text inside your document please make sure before you apply any format that you select the text first look if i uh, if i am here for example and then try to change the font try to make it bigger look do you, do you see what is happening it's not applying it to the actual text it is applying it to the location that i am in so based on the location or your selection your format will get applied. So now if I select the first paragraph again, I can make this red all red. I can make it all uh, black. I can insert a button border. As you can see here, do you see this icon? This is the border. If I click once here, it inserts a button border. If I need to create a border that surrounds the entire section, I can select the surround. If I need to fill uh, uh, this border with a color, I can fill it with a different color. If I need 
to uh, make sure that I don't have any space in here I choose the no spacing format but if you have enter look this is so big that's why you have uh, a lot of uh, space uh, if I undo what I just did show format here will tell me that I already pressed enter enter here so this is basically a place for text and now if I control Z Control Y, Control Y again, that will take me Control Y one more time. That will apply the no uh, spacing. We will cover styles, we will cover different formats as we progress. Also, we will cover on how to apply bullet format, how to uh, change the text, how to change the size of your text. Uh, let's look here. If I click this entire paragraph and then click on this icon here, clear or formatting, I get back my original uh, text. So uh, now you know what is a clipboard, you know how to paste the items from the clipboard, you know how to uh, copy, how to cut, how to paste, how to use the format painter. So we almost finished this category here from the home tab. Uh, also we know how to change the actual font settings. You can even, this is a nice feature, text effect. Look, when I click here, I can make my text look professionally uh, by only uh, clicking once on any of these format here. My text will look very, very nice. Look at that. One click, one click, I may create a professional uh, text. Also, for alignment, you have uh, left alignment, right alignment, center alignment, uh, justify, if you need to uh, make sure that your text is uh, aligned from both sides right and uh, left so if i click on uh, justify here look it fills in justify justify let's say uh, regular justify look what happened it fixed the alignments from the left and from the light uh, right side you see usually that in box so now you know how to use it. If you need to change the line spacing, you can click here and choose any of the line spacing available. But remember that you select. We will cover that uh, step by step. And uh, for now, uh, you have a good understanding of what is going on in your documents. We will go over many of these items here because we have many labs this is the lecture time now and once we start our labs we will cover new and uh, different uh, features in Microsoft Word uh, 2013 uh, I hope that you enjoy enjoyed the lecture we covered today we uh, learn new techniques how to change the settings inside the application how to access the backstage view uh, how to change the uh, quick access toolbar how to create your own tab how to put some commands inside your application how to navigate to insert some text to change the color how do you cut what is a clipboard and usually you can keep many items inside your clipboard and you know how to close the window of uh, the uh, Word uh, document by itself and close the application uh, in general. Uh, also, you know what is the uh, trust center. When you open a document from the internet, sometimes you try to type inside the document. You can't remember to click on the edit tool uh, or uh, enable editing. Uh, it's uh, uh, an info message below the ribbon and that will enable you to edit the document and save it uh, and you know also how to change the property in the backstage view remember how to change your uh, revision how to uh, apply a password for your document I hope that uh, you had good time uh, throughout this lecture and I will see you in the future bye bye everyone